In today's video, we will reveal the most insane magic performances, from Chris Angel's famous body split trick, to a demon magician setting Simon's head on fire. As a bonus we will also be covering Gabriella's insane straight jacket escape stunt, Penn and Teller getting fooled by an egg, and much more. Without any further ado, let's begin. Chris Angel's most viral body split illusion. Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. In this trick, Chris Angel has a man and woman lay their backs on separate benches parallel to one another. Then he requests for four volunteers from the crowd in the scene to pull the legs and arms of the individuals laying on the bench. Afterward, the magician mysteriously splits the woman in half by placing his hands on her stomach. Also, he turns to the man and splits him in half as he did with the woman. With their bodies detached, he carries the woman's upper body and puts her on the ground. As he carries the man's upper body to place him on the bench he lifted the woman's upper body from, the woman crawls away in shock. Amazingly, neither the woman nor the man are bleeding and their lower and upper bodies aren't lifeless. The man's legs are visibly moving on the bench and he moved his hands when Chris placed him on the woman's bench. Before the woman crawls too far away, the magician picks her up, calms her down, and puts her on the bench he lifted the man's upper body from. Thereafter, the magician performs one of the most amazing magic illusions ever caught on camera. He merges the man's upper body with the woman's lower body and merges the woman's upper body with the man's lower body. After merging them, both of them stood up and walked properly without any support or difficulty. Well, how did the magician execute his tricks? Here is how he did them. Chris used two lookalike males and females in this trick to make it seem like a real magic illusion, and the crowd around the scene were all stooges. The woman he walks to the bench at the beginning of his magic show is the first female replica and is visibly young. Similarly, the man he initially asks to lie on the other bench is the first male replica. We notice several camera angle changes in the clip which enables the magician and his assistants to do setups whenever required without being detected by viewers. A camera cut happened after Chris asked some people to come over to pull the legs and arms of the man and woman lying on the benches. The purpose of this cut was to actualize the first setup, which was to change the woman laying on the bench to a different woman. Looking closely after the camera cut, we observe that the second female replica looks older, than the first female replica and her legs are fake. To trick the audience into believing it's the same woman, both ladies are wearing similar blouses and have the same hairdo. Also, the woman's fake legs are wearing the exact replica of the skirt the first female replica has on. In addition, the second replica female's upper body is completely real as she's half-bodied. Half-bodied humans are amputees or people that suffer from Amelia, a physical abnormality present from birth or fractional emission of one lower limb or more at birth. Likewise, a half-bodied replica was used to replace the man laying on the other bench during the aforementioned camera cut. Both men have the same hairstyle on and are wearing sunglasses. The purpose of the sunglasses is to cover most of their faces to hinder viewers from spotting the difference between them. Additionally, unlike the half-bodied woman, the half-bodied man has short legs. To hide his short legs, he is wearing a plastic shell under his body to hide them. That explains why his body seems to be longer than hers and a black material can be seen covering the lower part of his body. We observe another setup when an extra camera cut is done and the man's fake legs appear to be moving. During the setup, two thin wires that are undetectable were connected to the fake legs. Hence, the magician's assistants pulled the legs to trick the audience when the camera started recording. When Chris seems to lay the half-bodied man on the bench to attach him to the woman's fake legs, a switch has been made. The man on the bench wasn't the half-bodied man but the first male replica. Looking through narrowed eyes, we discover that he presses the bottom of his shirt with his hands against the bench, before Chris lays him on the bench. Additionally, the shirt is split from the back and he doesn't have it worn properly, instead, he puts his hands and neck into it from the back. Also, he is sitting in a twisted position with his lower body taking the position of the woman's fake legs. While he maintains that sitting position with his legs in the skirt, the upper part of the skirt is braced to seem like the woman's lower body. Then, the camera is set to an angle that makes it appear like the man's upper body is still detached from the woman's lower body. Additionally, the man is wearing a model of the sandals previously worn by the first female replica. To make the trick work perfectly, his toenails are painted pink like that of the woman. When Chris supposedly attaches the detached man to the woman's lower body, we confirm our previous claim of his shirt not being worn properly. His body isn't in the shirt as he lays on his back, instead, the front and back of the shirt appear to be above his body. To prevent viewers from noticing the shirt, the camera was focused on the man only for a few seconds when the magician stood him up. In addition, 
the camera didn't show the man's back view the moment he stood up which would have exposed the entire trick. However, in an instant, he takes the shirt off and wears it properly when the camera sways from him to focus on the woman. Furthermore, the woman already had the exact type of shorts worn by the male replica under her skirt before the show started. Hence, she takes the skirt off revealing the shorts and wears a black pair of socks and shoes when the camera was still focused on the man. Thereafter, she replaces the half-bodied woman with the fake legs on the bench. Therefore, when they both stood up, their upper bodies were not switched. Demonic Fire Ritual Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. In this trick, the demon magician Miki begins by lighting a piece of paper up with fire and making it disappear into thin air. Then he walks over to the judges, examines each of them, and invites Simon to the stage. Thereafter, the magician sits the judge on a chair, wears a black cloth over his head, and soaks his head with lighter fluid. With the judge seated on the chair, the magician wears a hollow box over his head. Afterward, he opens the box from above, lights two match sticks, and sets his head ablaze. While the fire is burning, the magician opens the windows of the box to show the audience that the box is filled with flame. In doing so, more oxygen gets into the box and makes the fire burn with more intensity. Once the fire burns for a while, the magician puts out the fire, takes the box off Simon's head. Amazingly, the black cloth wasn't burnt by the fire and the judge's head wasn't roasted by the fire either. Well, how did he perform his illusion? Here is how he did it. For the first trick where Miki vanished the piece of paper into thin air, he used a specially made thin paper treated with acid so that it will vanish in a flash when ignited. This specially made thin paper is known as flash paper. Flash paper is made of nitrocellulose, also known as cellulose nitrate, which is a highly flammable compound formed by nitrating cellulose through exposure to a mixture of nitric acid and sulfuric acid. For the subsequent trick, the fire didn't torch the black cloth Miki wears above the judge's head which is evident when he takes the box off his head. We observe that the fluid the magician uses to dampen the black cloth after wearing it over the judge's head wasn't lighter fluid. Instead, he sprinkles water on the cloth to keep his head cool while the fire burns in the box, at the same time, it gave a very convincing illusion that Simon's head was being soaked with lighter fluid. However, before the magician puts the fire out and takes the box off Simon's head, the fire appears to be burning fiercely in the box. He even opens the windows around the box to show the audience the intensity of the fire. Yet, the judge sits calmly without being in distress which wouldn't be the case if his head is truly on fire. As it turns out, there is an inner compartment in the box that the fire can't get into, no matter how fiercely it burns. The chamber is fire-resistant and heat-resistant, as such that it repels the heat of fire on the outside and keeps its inner part cool. Hence, the inner chamber is made of materials that keeps the black cloth and the judge's head protected from the flame. Gabriella's insane straight jacket escape. Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. In this trick, the magician invites the judges to the stage and hands Teller a straight jacket. Also, she shuffles a deck of math equation cards before Penn tells him to stop at his convenience. Once he chooses a card, she shows it to him and tells him to memorize it and prepare to solve it. Gabriella invites Allison to the stage and hands over the deck of cards to her. Focusing her attention on the other judge, she asks him to help her put the jacket on and strap her up from behind. Thereafter, she tells the host to hold up each of the cards consecutively and asks Penn to solve each of them. The host is instructed to throw each card upward if the judge gets the calculation right. However, she tells the host to feel free to make fun of him if he gets the answer to the math equation wrong. Gabriella predicts that she would take the jacket off before Allison gets to the card the judge initially chose. But if she is unable to take off the jacket before the card is found, everyone is free to make fun of her. Once Teller fully straps the magician with her hands across her body and behind her back, she is hooked to a rope hanging from dot above the stage. Also, the magician is turned upside down and pulled upwards. Fascinatingly, Gabriella frees herself from the jacket before Penn gets too far solving the equations on the cards and finds his previously selected card. In addition, she has the equation of the card the judge initially chose solved on her shirt. Well, how did she perform her tricks? Here is an explanation. Firstly, the card the judge chooses at the beginning of the show is forced by the magician. She made sure to keep the card she wants the judge to select on top of the deck while shuffling the rest of the deck. We observe the card popping out twice in her attempts to keep it on top of the deck. She forced this card because she had the equation on the card solved on her shirt before the show which she reveals at the very end. We will compare her second trick where she freed herself from the straight yaka, 
T to a similar trick performed by a masked magician. But first, we will explain how a straight jacket is worn. To wear a straight jacket, one would turn it around with its back facing the wearer's chest and both arms worn into the sleeves. Then its buckles are to be fastened behind the wearer's back while the person's arms are to be folded across the front and pulled to the back. Afterward, the ends of the sleeves of the jacket should be wrapped around and tied behind the person's back. To keep the knot away from the hand of the person wearing it, the sleeve ends of some straight jackets is usually anchored between the wearer's legs. In the masked magician's trick, the strap that holds both ends of his arms is a knot, and he gets it above his head. After he gets it over his head, the knot gets a bit loose and he can move his hands more freely. Afterwards, he unbuckles the jacket from behind and uses his left hand to hold on to its right sleeve from the inside to remove his right arm. Once the masked magician's right arm is out of the jacket, he reaches for the strap between his crotches, and unbuckles it. With the strap unbuckled, he takes the straight jacket off easily. However, the way Gabriella frees herself from the straight jacket is a lot easier compared to how the masked magician freed himself. Unlike the masked magician, she doesn't need to move her hands over her head to remove the knot holding her hands together. This is because she's upside down, and gravity helps her to move the strap over her head. The strap can be seen right above her shoulder blade and close to the bottom of her neck. Hence, she loosens up a bit by moving her head and neck haphazardly to make the knot go over her head. Similar to the masked magician's move, she holds the end of her left sleeve with her right hand from within the jacket to free her left arm. Once both of her hands are free, she loosens the buckle and takes the jacket off. We notice that Gabriella expands her body by pushing her chest forward and widening her arms while Teller buckles the jacket. Similarly, the masked magician used the same technique when his assistants were buckling the straight jacket. They both did this so they will have enough room in the jacket to move their arms freely and loosen the jacket with ease. The magician who fooled Penn and Teller with an egg. Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. In this trick, the magician picks a red bandana, sticks it into his folded palm, and transforms it into an egg. Thereafter, he pulls the bandana out of the egg after cracking it to show the audience that it is a fake egg. However, he picks a glass tumbler, breaks the egg, and performs a fascinating magic trick. After breaking the egg, the magician pours egg white and egg yolk out of it into the cup to show that it is a real egg. Eventually, Caleb's illusion successfully fooled Penn and Teller. Well, how did he execute his trick? To help you figure this out, Let's see what Penn has to say about the magician's trick. You end up doing uh, a trick that we all know, sucker, silk, and egg. He said, a trick that we all know, the sucker, silk, and egg. Now you may be wondering what exactly is a sucker, silk, to egg illusion is. Here is an explanation on how the trick works. This illusion is done by stuffing a silk bandana into a gimmick hollow egg. If it is properly executed, the audience will be tricked into believing that the bandana was transformed into an egg. To make the trick work, the magician hides the egg in his folded palm and stuffs it up with a bandana. Due to the extremely thin and light nature of silk, it fits perfectly in the hollow egg without a trace, and the magician eventually reveals the egg to the audience. However, in Caleb's performance, after stuffing the scarf into the fake egg, we observe that he cracked the egg open. Also, the magician poured the contents of the egg into a see-through glass tumbler. How could this have been a gimmick hollow egg when we eventually see him pour egg white and yolk out of it? When Penn asked the magician if what he poured into the cup was real egg white and yolk, Caleb said yes. The judge was fooled because he thought the magician performed the popular sucker silk to egg trick, whereas that wasn't the trick the magician performed. At the beginning of his trick, the magician picks up an egg and makes it seem like he is sticking the bandana into the egg. But he didn't, instead, he folded the scarf up into the shape of a small ball without giving anything away to the audience. Once he's done folding the bandana, he reveals the egg while firmly pressing the bandana against the egg with his index finger. In this position, none of the audience are aware that the scarf is folded between his finger and the egg because it is facing him. Although you might be wondering how it is possible for Caleb to fold the large scarf into a small ball without being noticed. As mentioned earlier, the piece of cloth is made of silk which is an extremely thin material. Therefore, that makes it easy for the magician to fold it up with ease as he did. For more clarity about the thinness of the silk material, it is used by magicians for thumb tip illusions. Once it is stuffed into the gimmick thumb tip, there would be enough space for one's thumb to fit into it. Hence, the fake thumb can be worn on one's real thumb with ease and without detection. Back to Caleb's illusion, the moment he passes the egg to his left hand from his right hand, we discover some things. The first thing we notice is that he initially presses the silk to the egg with his right index finger. 
Secondly, he switches the egg to his left hand and presses the silk with his left thumb. The magician did this move smoothly without being noticed and that's why he fooled Penn and Teller. Afterward, he grabs one end of the silk and pinches it, and makes it seem like he is performing the popular silk-to-egg trick. Hence, in the end, he breaks the egg and pours its contents into the tumbler because he used a real egg from the start. Chris Angel's Dove Resurrection Illusion Let's do a quick recap of what happened in the performance. In this trick, Chris and his girlfriend stumble upon a dead bird at the entrance of a building. It seems to mean the bird accidentally crashed against the door post while attempting to fly into the building. Without hesitation, the magician picks up the dove whose head appears to be detached from its body and performs an amazing illusion. Chris magically attaches its head to its body, resurrects it, and the bird flies away. Well, how did the magician perform his illusion? Here is how he did it. When Chris bends to the ground, he picks the gimmick head which isn't attached to the bird's body and hides it in his palm. He did this in a split second without being caught on camera to prevent viewers from uncovering his illusion. Thereafter, when he supposedly picks up the bird to resurrect it, he turns its head, reveals it from its hidden position, and sets it free. As it turns out, the detached dove head is a fake and the dove's actual head is folded up and hidden between its body and the ground. Although the bird appears to be lifeless as it lays on the ground before the magician picks it up, it wasn't dead. Additionally, the sign on the door post was purposely designed by the magician and his associates to make it seem like the bird crashed onto it. 